Indian mosque bulldozed in defiance of court order. And I would like you to, oh, wait, it's in, never mind. I was going to make you guess where this happened, but it's in the subtitle. Okay. In Uttar Pradesh, India. Um, of, of course. Of course. Of course. Um, on May 17th, a, in a highly inflammatory move, a local administration in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh bulldozed a mosque defying a state uh, high court order. The mosque called uh, Masjid Garid Nawaz al Maruf had stood for at least six decades and since the British rule. Uh, a local imam, uh, Malana Abdul Mustafa, who is on the mosque committee, said that local Muslims were scared and did not dare to protest when the mosque was demolished. The demolition was in violation of a high court order issued on April 24th, which stated that buildings in the state could be should be protected from any eviction or demolition until May 31st. In the following days, local Muslims said that a permanent structure was built by the administration to block access to the mosque. On Ma March 19th, people were stopped from entering the mosque on for Friday prayers, causing protests in the area. More than 35 local Muslims who were protesting were arrested and put in jail. So this Wait. there's there's a lot that goes into this. Mm. And um, if someone knows more specifics about that, please tell us in the live chat. Because so this happened over a period of months. So there was a part in around March where for whatever reason they said that this was going to be demolished and actually let me pull this up because i want to get this right um just a second and i want to find my notes um so on march 15th there was a notice about this unofficial mosque and requesting evidence that you know the committee or whoever was in charge of, had permissions for this land and they were citing a court ruling that illegal religious um constructions can be demolished if they caused any obstructions so what the mosque committee did is they gave a detailed response they're like we've had electricity here since like 1959 there they showed that any the mosque structures don't um uh, cause obstruction in any way and um but they did not like honor that evidence so to speak so then three days later on march 18th they went the mosque committee went to Allahabad, the high court citing the concerns they're like i think our mosque is going to face imminent demolition um because of it being deemed like an illegal or unofficial religious structure they're like, it's been here for, they claim hundreds of years, or at least a hundred years. Um, and so upon um, getting, the court eventually ruled that no action can be taken for demolition until the 31st. Now, what's not clear to me about this is um, if this means that, oh, on the 31st demolishing, it was totally fine. Or if this was kind of like a stay and decision, that part isn't entirely clear to me. Regardless, what ended up happening was way before the 31st on the 17th, there was just this demolition. So they like kicked people out of the mosque who were inside. And um, well, actually leading up to this, there are many days, like I said Ooh, before. Like where, state authorities? Yes. Like they were building barriers for people to actually get into the mosque. And so they were barriers for people giving their Juma prayers. And this caused a lot of protests. And these protests, 35 people were arrested. Some of these people are still in jail for this protest. So that happened a few months ago. Now, this past week is when this was just demolished in defiance of this court order that said that it couldn't be demolished until the end of the month. Um, and what people weren't allowed to be anywhere near there. Is this, what, what court is this? This is Uttar Pradesh's high court? Yes, the state's high okay. court said that you can't demolish this until the end of the month. Wait, so you have the government versus the government? You have the court saying that you can't do this, and then you have state officials going in and demolishing it anyways? Um, uh, I believe it was more like the state versus like a district. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So state as in government officials, yes. Were yeah, they the okay. same officials? 
who made the decision versus who did it. No, you know, different Wait. levels of government. So would they people who did it? You said, did you mention that the people who demolished it got arrested or anything because of this is against the court order? No, no. Why not? They did this against the court order. No, like, isn't this a violation of the law and destruction of uh, private property against the court order? Like, shouldn't they get arrested? Yeah, well, it seems like kind of a little bit of bureaucratic stuff. So then in a press statement, the district administration described the demolished structures as a residential complex. So they said that this is a residential construction that is illegal. Whereas previously they were saying it was an like an unofficial religious structure. Um, and so... Um, Read what Katie is saying. Katie is saying things like this is what I mean when I say the court rulings don't matter when it comes to these people. Yeah, there's a lot of really by these people. By the way, by these people, Katie is referring to Hindutva, far right yeah. bigots in India. But yeah, go ahead. Especially one. in Uttar Pradesh. Um, the court has also said before you cannot jail people for criticizing politicians, but Yogi still jails people for criticizing him. For those who Yogi. don't know, Yogi mm. Adyanath or Yogi A is the chief minister of the state. And he's yeah. a Hindu extremist. And for uh, people who don't know, but are new here, Uttar Pradesh is one of, I've, I want to say one of the, but actually no, the most religious extremist um, province, state or province, state mm -hmm. in India. Um, so, and and you, this yogi guy, which is the head of it, is is one of the most bigoted anti anti Muslim bigots. Like the things that he says, and he's very close to. Uh, Modi and his government, but this man, this man is like the things that he's recorded publicly saying about the Muslims. It's wild, we can't even is, say. We can't even describe it here, or else we're gonna we might get a strike or something. But yeah, that guy heads the state, and he doesn't really care about the law. Like the way he treats Muslims in his state, it, it violates India's own laws. So it's crazy. Yeah, yeah and I think um, it's worth highlighting that this state, Uttar Pradesh, has, Katie, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it is the most populous state in India, and it has one of the highest populations of Muslims within India, which is coincidentally, unfortunately, one of the states where they are the most persecuted, the most demonized, the most vilified. Um, and um so a lot of people are saying like this is a highly inflammatory move um and what you're seeing here on the screen is not only did they demolish this mosque but then they then dumped the the rubble and the remains into the river which i feel like is just like putting salt in the wound like you can't even recover what's left because mm. we just threw it in the river um and um there was something else I wanted to highlight. Oh, yes. So this is really important. And this is going to get into um, the a little bit of detail and minutia that I'm not as familiar with, but it's important for the bigger picture. So Uttar Pradesh, so this the district where this mosque is located is adjacent to Adio, I, I always say it wrong, Adioha. Um, which is the mythical birthplace of Lord Ram or Rama, which is like the H Hindu nationalist, like, I don't even know how to describe how important like Lord Rama is as a mythological figure, um, as a, as an object of worship, like to the hin Hindu nationalists, like it's, it's, it's so extreme the way that they feel about Lord Ram. So this is, this mosque is located very close to that area. And in this area of Adi <laughs> um, this is where this mosque, this Barbary mosque was located before it was demolished in 1992. Now, this is a highly contentious move that has been the source of so much communal tension, so much communal hatred, so much um, conflict and just really severe consequences to the demolition of this mosque where Hindus say that Lord Rama was born. 
and there's been lots of legal cases that have gone into the demolition of this mosque, but people are saying that the demolition of this mosque is one of the most inflammatory moves that have happened since the demolition of the Barbary Mosque in 1992. So why is it not getting more coverage? I guess because maybe this is kind of, to a Western audience, this seems like kind of a niche issue. Like, oh, we're fighting over the land where it's, it's rumored that a Hindu god was born. Like, I think it's not perceived as very relevant to, um, right. like, read, read our some audience. Of the uh, Chihaya is saying, you mean Ayodhya. Thank you. <laughs> I can never say right. <laughs> Lord Rom is important mostly to people in UP and the surrounding states. We yeah, it's should... definitely, I would definitely emphasize its importance in that region, but it does have a mm. through line of being very important to Hindu nationalists in general. I mean, it's all over their propaganda. Mm. But is it particularly heavy in that region? Sure. Oh, and Katie is answering my question about, or my claim about it being the most populous state and regarding its Muslim population. Katie is saying, the Muslim population of the state is the same as the population of Argentina. Right. It is the most populous state with two thirds of the US population in one state that is the most extremist religious state in the country. So like, right. so I, and I say that just to highlight to people who are not aware, like how high these stakes are. Right, so Uttar, Pr Uttar Pradesh has 43 million. That's not the population of Uttar Pradesh. That's the population of the minority Muslim population of Uttar Pradesh. So there are 43 million Muslims living in the one of the most anti-Muslim far-right extremist provinces, like states in the whole world. Like, place <laughs> yes. again, guys, 43 million is the not, not the, there's a, the population of Uttar Pradesh is only 20% Muslim. And this 20% is 43 million people. Okay. And these 43 million people are living under an extremist, anti Muslim, bigoted, fascist regime under Yogi, with, with, very, very, with a lot of popular support against Muslims. Imagine, like, what's the population of Gaza? Gaza. Um. Two like, million? I think right, it's two, two million. Yeah, two million, okay? We're Ooh, talking I'm 43 million. We're talking about 43 million Muslims here. So if you if you care about far right fascism and far right bigotry and oppression of people, right? Globally, this is something that you might want to pay attention to. What's happening in not in we're not even talking about India as a whole. We're talking about just one of the states in India. Look at the astronomical numbers like that we're talking here. It's insane that this is not getting more coverage, given the number of lives of the number of people who are being affected by it. Well, and also, I mean, not to always go back to this point, but just in terms of like the Muslim Ummah. Like everything is not obviously a complete calculation of just like who has more people where in terms of what issues we care about, but it's uh, it's so severe oh and katie is saying a lot of the shia muslims in uh uttar pradesh actually vote for the bjp which is the ruling party of the region and um the country not sure if stockholm syndrome or just to spite the sunnis i think that's a that's a very interesting point hmm. um uh chihaya is saying there's also castes among muslims caste dynamics among muslims make matters even more complicated in india only a skilled leader with a sense of reality can rule India's states. No, it is. It is very um, complicated. I feel like there was something else I wanted to say. Um, yeah, I know. I think the whole issue with the Barbary Mosque, like I can see people in the live chat arguing back and forth about what came before. There was a temple that was destroyed. And then people have been like fighting over this area of land, like for centuries. I find it very similar to kind of this fight over Jerusalem, actually. Um, and so I don't, I, I, that the whole history of it is not something I'm extremely familiar with. So I don't want to get into that specifics, but I just wanted to say that to give people a larger, um, uh, idea of why this is such contested land and why this is so inflammatory specifically in this area. 
Um, so yes, I, it's, it'll be interesting to see if the people who did this are going to be prosecuted in any way, but I would not hold my breath. You're muted. How many eager Muslims do we have as a whole? As a whole, I'm not sure. I know that the numbers in terms of who are mm -hmm. actively in detainment no, are no, no, no. around at over 1 million, possibly mm -hmm. 2 million. I'm not sure about the actual population in the broader Xinjiang region. Because the broader mm. Xinjiang region is basically, I mean, uh, there's, there's, the, it's oh, no. very high surveillance, extremely high surveillance. Um, so it affects way more people than just the people who are actually detained. I think 12 million, 12 million, right? So if we compare Gaza with Uttar Pradesh and Uyghurs in China, um, again, this is actually, I think, a very, when I compare these things, it's not to suggest that we shouldn't pay attention to the other ones, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about, like, just to give some sense to the scale of um, the number of people that are affected by policies of governments, right? So if you think about, okay, what, what Israel do, does, how many Muslims, like, it impacts in a very extreme way, uh, or what China does, how many Muslims does it impact? Um, again, it's not. This is not just a, a simplistic version of this comparison, because the the way that their lives are affected are extremely different, right? So, for example, what China does is a lot more extreme, literally putting people in concentration camps for the crime of just being Muslim. So, it's, the nature of the effect on people is very different. So, I'm not just main, I'm not just, when I compare these things. I'm not just saying like suggesting so that one of them is worse or. Um, uh, or one of it doesn't deserve attention. Of, co of course, they all deserve attention. But I just want to put it in perspective, the scale of what's happening in India, just to promote the idea of more people paying attention to it. Okay? Like the number, like, mm -hmm. again, 2 million in Gaza. We're talking 12 million Muslims in China, in eager, eager Muslims in China. And we're talking 43 million Muslims, not in India, but only in one state in India. Right, so this is what we, we. That's why India is so important to us. Mm -hmm. And Katie is saying here something. Oh, so this is more background to the temple. So the Hindu side says that the Ram uh, Nanda or temple was destroyed by Babur, the first Mughal who created the mosque on top of the demolished temple. Yeah, so we're going back to the Mughal Empire, guys. This is how far back this goes. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, right. but I also just wanted to say I'm proud of myself for remembering the population of Uttar Pradesh and uh, yeah, specifically as Muslim minority. I was like, dang. I'm Aaron is saying both India and Jerusalem were invaded by Muslim armies. So in a sense, that is similar. Yeah, but those are many years ago. I mean, that's interesting point. But if we want to compare them, I'm mostly focusing on what this, you know, right now. And again, I'm not, when I compare, the, when I compare things, I'm not suggesting they're similar. I'm just comparing numbers for perspective, okay? You know, people always, when you compare things, people are like, oh, I mean, they're not the same. Yeah, I'm just comparing one. I'm not comparing the entire thing. I'm just comparing one aspect of it. When you have a point of reference. So for example, when Katie in the live chat was saying, okay, like other British population, Muslim population is the same as Argentina as a whole, Argentina as a whole, this, was she suggesting that they are the same? Um, Argentina and Uttar Pradesh are the same. No, it's just a point of reference for comparison so you get the sense of the scale of things, right? Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Kali, you know, like me, then that means that you probably want more blasphemous art. Well, I have good news for you. If you subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below, then you get a free booklet of some of the tastiest blasphemous art available today. So, if you want some of this delicious blasphemy, and we're so generous that we update it for you guys weekly for free, all you have to do is sign up for our newsletter below. Uh, you can also go to blasphemousart.com slash ebook. That's blasphemousart.com slash ebook. Sign up with your email, and you get free gifts of this tasty blasphemy. What could be better? So, make sure you sign up. Link below.